ladies and gentlemen, my name is April Cole and today I have with me Jim Sokolowski, Director of Global Learning and Leadership Development for Savis, a CenturyLink company. Jim, welcome and thank you for taking time to speak with us today. Thank you. To start out, please tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to Savis. Yeah, so um, I didn't originally start in training, actually in uh, the late 90s, I was, uh, wanted to be a pilot, an airline wow. pilot, and uh, did that for uh, about a year and a half. Not as exciting as I thought it would be from there, transition into operations. And then in uh, later 90s, um, a fax machine. Uh, remember those fax machines? I do. Yes, yeah, so we had a fax machine in one of my locations, and a, a posting came through at, for an education manager. Wow. It seemed like an interesting job, something that, that I wanted to give a, a shot, and so I applied and really didn't think I was going to get the job, but did. Um, and uh, then it was the, oh gosh, what do I do now? Uh, factor uh, mm -hmm. of I'm not sure I can do this job and so flew, lived in Chicago for a while did the role um, moved into a variety of different progressively larger roles and responsibilities within a variety of companies uh, ended up here at Savis in middle 2010 mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's gonna get us to where we're at today okay so I know that the L&D team at Savis has gone through tremendous change over the last couple of years. Can you tell us a little bit, bit about how you guided your team through that? Yeah, so um, it, it has been a lot of change, and I can tell you that uh, when I arrived at Savis, um, sort of a blank whiteboard, there was, mm -hmm. there was nothing, and so the, uh, the Vice President of HR and the CEO uh, wanted learning, understood that learning could be a strategic lever to, the, to enable the business, and uh, tasked me with sort of creating it from the ground up, which was pretty exciting. So uh, from there, when we started off, it's a team of two, uh, so a very sort of small, quaint group, if you will, <laughs> um, connected with the business to find out ultimately, you know, what, what is it the, that the business needs mm -hmm. uh, so that we could directly align to strategy. Um, got a couple of quick wins with some onboarding and leadership development activities, uh, grew the team uh, to what's now 13. Uh, and so from that point over the, the course of the two years, it was, it was a lot of set the vision, set the strategy mm -hmm. based on what the business needs, get the right people on the team for what we needed, structure the team as appropriate to best support the business, constantly measure results, improve results mm -hmm. as we moved on, um, and kept everybody going in the same direction. A lot of change, as you said, but mm -hmm. it's been, um, I would say, transformational. So how do you know you were on the right path? Because that, I mean, that's a pretty big task to undertake. How did you know along the way that you were going in the right direction? So uh, that, you know, that's a great question. It's, it's interesting because ultimately, I'm not sure you really know mm -hmm. as you start uh, because everything is a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And so the hypothesis was, let's find out what the business wants and needs. Let's get a quick win or two or three uh, to build some credibility so the business understands that, hey, these folks can help us. Uh, and then reassess where you're going, mm -hmm. measure results, uh, collect feedback from the business, make sure that the business sees you going in the right direction, uh, and collect feedback from the team because ultimately everybody comes mm -hmm. at it with a different perspective mm -hmm. and a, a very valuable perspective to say going on the right path or not going on the right path. Uh, we've, used, we've used a lot of different data measures, a lot of which, a lot of what we do is, is data driven mm -hmm. uh, to say are we going on the right path, let's not go with a gut feel because oftentimes it's not the most reliable and so we've used data from learning metrics to engagement surveys to um, team development programs to feedback from the team to feedback from external uh, vendors and clients and customers too to just validate that what we're doing is, is right and if we're not we course correct and mm -hmm. and we test the next hypothesis and do the same thing uh, so it's a cyclical process so your team must be doing something right I understand that you've received training magazines top 125 award as well as 2012 ASTD award as well so what are the keys to your success so, um, you know, I, I kind of joke, it's uh, a lot of luck and a little bit of skill, mm -hmm. and, or maybe a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. Either way, um, it's a little of both. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would, I would contend that the biggest key to success of the current team is the team. Uh, so it's interesting, as I grew in my career, both personally and professionally, you know, I hear a lot of people saying the key to success is uh, having, uh, to coin a phrase, the right people on the bus. Mm -hmm. And in this role especially, I realized that uh, the key to success here has been selecting the right people for the right role at the right time. And mm -hmm. so without the people on the team, the right people, 
there's no way we'd be where we're at today. So I think that's the foundation. But as you build on that, and the, you hear a little bit of a theme, but as you build on that, the next piece is really to listen to the business. Mm -hmm. uh, because ultimately it's the business that's going to write our check. And writing yeah. our check is not so much the paycheck. Writing our check is the letting us sit at the table to say, how can we help you? And if they don't see value in what we do, ultimately, uh, they're not going to ask. And we become mm -hmm. obsolete and we become just a cost center or an, or an expense mm -hmm. as opposed to a, a way to help bring the business to life. So listening to the business needs is critical. Um, uh, vision, creating a vision for the future. Uh, it's interesting, when I arrived at Savas, it started this little mantra, which at the beginning was a joke, uh, which kind of caught on, and it was a reference to ivy, uh, the plant. And ivy grows in sort of this three-year cyclical process. Again, the first year you plant it, it kind of sleeps. You don't see much happening. The second year, you sort of see little sprouts and a little bit of life. And then the third year, it takes over the entire wall of your house, and mm -hmm. you're cutting it all down and trying to control it. And so we use this uh, sleep, creep, leap mentality and really set that as the vision for our three-year plan, uh, much like Ivy. So setting that vision. Um, I would also say that the key to success for our team has been uh, building with success measures in mind. So mm -hmm. we, could, we could do training to check the box and ultimately say, yeah, we did it. And it becomes scrap learning that someone takes and throws away yeah. and it does no good. Uh, but we've, uh, for the last 18 months, really been talking about business outcomes and metrics. How are we going to measure success and then how are we going to report it back to the business so that they understand the value. And I would uh, say the final piece um, is strategy is important, but ultimately uh, execution. Mm -hmm. So the flawless execution of the strategy. And so I have a little bit of a phrase I coined myself, um, which I'll refer to. Um, so a good strategy on a bar napkin is a bar napkin. Mm -hmm. A good strategy on a bar napkin that's flawlessly executed is a good strategy. Mm -hmm. So execution, I would say, is the other component to, uh, to our success. So there is a saying by General Douglas MacArthur that says that a general is just as good or just as bad as the troops that are under his command. So what is your philosophy for building a fantastic team? Well, um, you know, first let me clarify. Um, so my philosophy to begin with is that everybody are peers, so nobody below. Mm -hmm. um, not to sort of disrespect General MacArthur, but <laughs> it's a wording change. Um, you know, I would say, uh, for me, it starts with sort of leadership in general. Um, because I have, to, I have to lead before I can think about building mm -hmm. a team. So as I think about leadership, there's really five areas mm -hmm. that, that come to mind for me. First. Um, and I think you'll see some, some thread with some of the earlier questions too. First is uh, inspire shared vision mm -hmm. to ultimately make sure that um, we know where we're going and that people are uh, embracing it and are passionate about where it is that we're going and that we're going in the right place. Uh, the second piece, uh, let's call it model the way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to ask anyone on my team to do things I wouldn't do and I need to be modeling that. I need to be modeling uh, the behaviors that I would expect out of the team um, and not modeling the things I wouldn't expect out of the team. Um, the third I call uh, encourage the heart, mm -hmm. which sounds a little bit uh, fluffy, um, but it's all about recognition, um, recognizing the efforts of people um, and rewarding that. And it doesn't necessarily need to be monetary, but recognizing mm -hmm. folks for the big things that they're doing for the company. Um, third one, enabling others to act. Um, let's face it, I know that I don't have all the answers. Uh, and I also know that uh, once we have the vision set, I, in many cases, just need to get out of the way, mm -hmm. which means enabling others to take things and drive them forward. And the last um, is challenge the process, mm -hmm. ultimately not accepting status quo, uh, making sure that we're, that we're doing things smartly and not just doing things because it's the way we've always done them. <coughs> so I would say uh, that's my leadership philosophy, as that then spills into the team. I really think it, it, it boils down to making sure that you find the right people with the right skills at the right time. Mm. And so I may have a variety of folks in front of me that are really skilled in some big areas, but if they're not the areas that I need today mm -hmm. to help drive things forward, it's not going to be helpful. So the key is timing, making sure that you get folks at the right time with the skills you need. Once you've got that selected, a bunch of individuals, it's going to be difficult uh, to drive the entire team forward. So there's a lot of team work that mm -hmm. needs to come together. And so focusing on team effectiveness is what comes next for me. 
uh, which is a component of a variety of facets, one of which is an individual understanding. So I need to understand who I am. Mm -hmm. You need to understand who you are before you can really show up. Mm -hmm. uh, the second piece then is a team understanding. I now need to understand not only myself, I also need to understand you and mm -hmm. everyone else on the team and, and you would need to do the same. Uh, the third and the fourth I think are critical and are a byproduct of mm -hmm. the first two. Uh, third is trust uh, yeah. and ultimately if, uh, if the team doesn't trust one another, it's going to be a very uh, difficult uh, team effectiveness process. The fourth is accountability. Uh, yeah. If we say we're going to do it, if we say we're going to deliver on it, we need to do that or we need to uh, negotiate mm -hmm. uh, different deliverables, milestones, deadline dates. Uh, also ties in with, I know that you or others on the team will have my back um, and I'll have your back, which kind of spills into trust. So they all work together. But mm -hmm. all the four critical components from my perspective on, on building a team. I would sort of wrap this question up with, uh, for me, the the barometer by which I measure the effect effectiveness of the team is uh, whether I'm invisible. It mm -hmm. sounds sort of weird, uh, but if the team operates as if I'm not there, uh, that's a good thing, mm -hmm. um, where they're not constantly looking for direction. Um, they're empowered, they're enabled, they're driving forward, they understand where to go, so I become a bit more invisible, sort of mm -hmm. pushing the group up the hill as opposed to pulling them up the hill. Mm -hmm. Um, the other piece I, I would contend is a little bit of healthy conflict. Um, mm. it's, it's a good byproduct of a solid team is that we can, we can debate, we can get the best mm. ideas out there, we don't always have to agree, and we walk away, we make the right decision for the situation, and we continue to drive, uh, continue to drive forward. So it's a lot of information about teams, but uh, a little bit of a philosophical perspective. Thank you, thank you for that. So what's next? What's next for you and your team? It sounds like you've done a lot of things over the last two years and you really are operating cohesively. What's next? So a great question. Um, first, I'll sort of spill back to the last question, team effectiveness. I think there's still work to be done on the team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, we're doing very well as a team. Um, you liken it to a car analogy, an eight cylinder engine. We're probably firing on seven which isn't bad, uh, it's, it's acceptable. Uh, but I think we've got some room to continue mm -hmm. to grow and become a more cohesive team, which ultimately will be a byproduct of better effectiveness for everybody. Uh, so that for sure. Uh, but the second piece, which is sort of status quo, keep doing what we're doing for uh, our current organization, but as we think broader, as we think um, uh, one year, two years, three years down the road, mm -hmm. it's how can we take what we've done at Savas um, some good, some not so good. Mm -hmm. uh, things we've learned along the way, the continuous improvement efforts, our connection to strategy, our quality, our efficiency efforts. We still have room to grow, uh, but how do we take that and scale it into the larger organization? We don't have all the right answers all the time, mm -hmm. uh, but we've learned a lot of key things uh, along the way that I think would be very helpful for the large organization uh, so that they're not stubbing their toes in the same place we are, mm -hmm. and they're ultimately leveraging some of the knowledge that we've acquired by doing it. Uh, over time, um, sort of liken our, our journey uh, to getting thrown in the deep end a little bit mm -hmm. um, and doggy paddling and figuring it out and once you've figured it out, showing others how to do the same thing. Uh, so I'd say that would be the next big step for us. Now, uh, you know, it'd certainly be fun to uh, win some more awards and mm -hmm. get some more accolades. That would be exciting mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about the, the people on the team. And, and if everyone is feeling good about what they're doing, they're showing up every day, yeah. uh, feeling like it's uh, not so much a job uh, as much as it is um, something that they get to do today, uh, I think that's, that's a big deal. So keeping the group engaged and inspired and, and helping them to continue to grow too. Fantastic. Oh, so to wrap up, what advice would you give to other learning professionals that are looking to transform their learning organizations? So, um, yeah, learning transformation. I'd say that we uh, have taken a pretty good swipe in the past two years at transforming uh, learning at Savas. It's been an exciting journey, a, a ground up build from blank whiteboard to um, not best in class, but at least being recognized mm -hmm. as being on the right path and getting closer, which is good. Um, you know, I would say some of the keys for us, uh, critical, uh, first and foremost, understanding the strategy of the business, mm -hmm. because ultimately, if you can't connect, if you can't resonate with the business, you become obsolete. Mm -hmm. And once you become obsolete, you start looking for another job, which 
isn't ultimately the end game that you're trying to play for. Uh, but understand their business plan so that you can speak their language, you can uh, identify where learning solutions are going to best enable that group. Uh, because the more you can connect with them, the more credibility you're going to have and the more they're going to let you connect with them. So mm -hmm. it's sort of this, this cycle that works with, with the business. Um, but ultimately understanding uh, the organization and the market you're in and where the company is going. They're critical to that, that business connection, if you will. Without that, um, you're sort of guessing at mm -hmm. the learning, which isn't necessarily the best solution. Um, I, I do think, though, as, as companies want to transform their learning, there's a, a couple key questions that they should constantly be asking mm -hmm. themselves. Um, first is, is learning the right solution, because ultimately, um, if we're going to throw dollars and learning at people, and it's ultimately not the right solution and it doesn't move the needle, uh, one of two things is going to happen. Um, people are going to get frustrated because they're doing learning that isn't helping them. Um, or uh, the second piece is that the business is going to stop spending the dollars to train people because training is not working. And mm -hmm. so you can sort of see where that goes. Mm -hmm. um, training wasn't the right answer. Uh, right. Even though you did the training, um, you now are on the hook for the training. That wasn't the right answer in the first place. But right. it's too late to tell people that. So making sure that uh, learning is the right solution, critical. Um, I would say the second piece is, um, how are you going to measure success? Mm -hmm. So uh, knowing what uh, the outcome of the learning solution needs to be, whether it's I need to see more of X behavior or I need to see someone create more of these widgets, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. how are you going to measure success? So ultimately mm -hmm. you can say we, we did or didn't achieve our objective and be able to report that to the business. Um, third question is ultimately how, is the, how does the learning solution support the strategy? And if it does, it's probably worth investing in. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's probably peripheral noise that you may want to steer clear of. Mm -hmm. is when the learning box gets open and the appetite grows, as we've seen, um, you need to become very selective on what you do and don't do because the demand is going to go, go up far quicker than you're going to be able to supply mm -hmm. it. Uh, so being very strategic around what are, where do you invest in, what levers are you going to pull to ultimately move the for business forward is going to be important. Last piece I would say is uh, make learning a process. Hmm. Um, and so I that have a sort of standing joke with some of the leaders across the organization that um, what we're not going to offer to you is to put you into a one or a two day leadership development program and you walk in and you're one way and you walk out two days mm -hmm. later and you're miraculously healed just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so make learning the process. How is it going to become more procedural so that the, the training is transferred, uh, the behavior changes happen, the learning sticks, as opposed to just an event mm -hmm. uh, that made me feel good and the food was good and the room was nice, but I didn't ultimately do anything different back on the job. Um, so I'd say so those are the key pieces uh, you know, off the cuff to, to be able to transform the, transform the organization. Well, thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate your time today. It's been very insightful. Thank you very much. My name is April Cole, and that's all we have for this evening. Thank you.